Hello everyone, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and this is part 25 of the Big Bad Buff Build for Beginners. And I'm going to start by saying I'm a complete idiot. Um, <clears throat> if you remember at the end of part 24, we had masked and painted our tail planes and our fin, and here is a what should come out to be a nice crisp red line. And what I said was, I'll get this weathering done on here and then we'll take the masking tape off and have a look. So I went on and weathered the underneath of the tail planes, so we painted them black and given them some streaks and blotchiness and stuff just to sort of you know make them look a bit different just want to see that you can actually see there yeah it's the camera's actually exaggerating the blotchiness on them but um they've they basically had a quick coating of um of some clear varnish as well just to uh just to sort of seal them in a bit make them a bit tougher so um yeah in doing that i forgot to do the fin so i've got to do that again now but what i'm going to be doing now is putting the camouflage on now we're going to be using the viejo model air products and i've got this set here this is the Vietnam War scheme and you can see on the back of here we've got the B-52 at the bottom and the PSYOP scheme but we've got those three colours there we're going to put on the top which are the three colours recommended here by monogram on the instructions. So um, we're going to be doing the tail planes and if you remember in part 24 we masked off and painted off, we painted, ma masked and then repainted our um, our walkway lines so that's all done so now we've got to put our three colours on and we can see here that what we've got is the 34159 which is actually the lighter green, okay? And that's in the center of both of them. And then to, off to the sides, we've got the tan color on this one on both sides. And on the port side, we've got the tan color on the outside and then the darker green color on the inside. So what I'm gonna do first of all is spray this area here around the centers um, and just basically roughly um, go in with the airbrush and get the shape that we're looking for. And we'll do it all on camera so you can see how it's done. The other major milestone with this is, um, if you remember, I, I, I'm using Viejo paints because this is a beginner's build. A lot of beginners are working on their kitchen table. They don't want to be leaving. Um, they don't want to be leaving basically dirty, you know, horrible smells around the house with all the solvent paints and everything. So basically, these Viejo paints are really good. They actually smell very nice. They do have a downside. They are genuine acrylics. They're, they're basically water-based acrylics, I believe. Um, and if you mix them up with any solvent paints or Tamiya or like Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners or whatever, they just turn to cottage cheese. They also, because they are water-based acrylics, they dry extremely fast. And because of that, you will get a thing called tip dry, where you're spraying and they, the, the, the airbrush keeps clogging up because it can't it can't push the paint past the dried paint on the very tip of the airbrush. So I've got some of this, which is airbrush flow improver. I got this on Amazon and it was like nine pounds. And the reason I bought this is because you could get a bottle this size, 17 milliliters, I believe. Yeah, 17, this was like 395 and that was nine pounds. So yeah, work it out yourself. So basically it says in here, um, uh, medium to improve the flow and delay the drying of paint on the needle we recommend adding one to two drops to ten drops of paint so it's a sort of two to ten mixture so if we go five drops of paint we'll go one drop of this um, and I'm guessing this will kind of act as a thinner to me it just smells like soap so we shall see um, so basically I've got my airbrush set up here it's all about 19 20 psi and I've thoroughly cleaned it out so we should be absolutely fine so I'm going to get myself, I've got a piece of paper towel here, what am I talking about? I'm going to um, basically just put a couple of drops of the Viejo airbrush thinner in here. So put my finger over the end, blow that around, and then just blow it through onto this paper towel. There we go. And that'll just make sure that we're kind of conditioned now. So I'm going to put a drop of this in. One, two, oh, that was three drops. So what I'm going to do is spray that out. Laugh at that droid on the tip, wouldn't it? So we'll go one, two drops in there. I'm not even sure if that was two drops. One, two. Okay, so it said one to two drops to ten drops of paint. So I'm going to go over the top. I've got a dirty old brag here. I need to get a clean one. Right, so we've got our two drops of... Uh, of that in the airbrush so I'm going to add the paint now it's 34159 which is as I say the mid green and that's going to be going in the middle of these two um, tail planes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there we go ten drops of that one 
now I think I'm just going to add a drop or two of thinners two drops of thinners Viejo thinners and I'm just going to put my finger over the end blow that back to get it all mixed up I'm not going to put anything in the airbrush because I don't want to contaminate this paint with anything and this should get it all stirred okay okay so we've got that all mixed up in there now we're just going to do a little test see how it sprays on there so basically looking at this tailplane here I'm just going to blow it off make sure there's no dust on there so look at this tailplane here we've got this one here so we're basically starting from around about here and then we're going up and around over to there and then back on like that so that's that line there roughly the reason I don't just spray it all green is what we will do we will get some of the black showing through the paint to give us that kind of artistic license a bit of wear and um, basically if I did it all green you would lose that effect but you've got to be very careful with doing this because the thing is if you if, if you do this heavy green on the edge when you come to do the, the next color you you won't get the black coming through in that one area so you'll have like a lovely weather area here weather area here but in between here would be a perfect brown line so um, we need to be a little bit careful how we go this but I'll, I'll do my best to show you how I'm going, I'm going about it so up to there like so and then across like that in and like that okay now if you notice I'm keeping the tail plane perpendicular to the airbrush because I don't want the paint to go over the edge and I also don't want to mask this edge so what I'm going to do now is just come along and I'm not going to spray it like you would like a car body I'm not going to go in certain lines now there's a thing called black basing which is where you can come along with the airbrush and go in and do little tiny squiggly patterns like this okay I'm not doing that what I'm doing is random shapes and I'm just going to build the paint up and then we should see a level of the black coming through come along to here I must say that stuff has worked wonders this is like spraying normal paint now and it smells gorgeous it smells like not, not so much perfume but it does smell like something like a very sweet smelling bathroom cleaner say there we go we can just get that in there and you can see the blotchiness I'm going for remember it's always best to stay light because you, you can't go back well, you can with, with post shading with the black but it's it's best not to it's best to stay with the only having to do it once if you like okay so this is kind of like black basing but not exactly All right so you can see there we've got a quite a heavily blacked area there so we're gonna actually come in here randomly again go over it and get rid of that, that black blotchiness but not completely You know, we've got a nice edge on there. Whoops, too much paint. Wipe it off. I'm just going to blow that back and dry that down with the airbrush. A little bit of blotchiness there. What I don't understand is if Viejo call this model air, it's designed for airbrushing, why don't they just put that in it? <laughs> Gets me.
And there we go, so that's that one. So we'll let that dry and see how it looks once it's dry. We'll grab our other one which is hiding under here. Now this one, what I'm going to do is put them in there. I'm going to take my plan and turn it upside down so I can hold it like that. Now this one is basically from corner to corner on this side. So it's just like that. Sort of keep it irregular. Like so. And then over here, we're kind of coming from there around like that. It's more sort of out like that, isn't it? And then kind of over like that. So there we go, there's our rough pattern on there. So again, we can now come along with our irregular patterns and just get the colours in. If you're doing like a really worn Russian aircraft where the paint has just been bleached and worn off by the sun and all the use, you know, this is a, a great technique for getting that. And it works really well. I've got a MiG-31 with that grey paint scheme. I am getting some issues with the airbrush, I've got to be honest. It's kind of blocking and clearing. You can see all of a sudden the paint starts coming heavier. It might be better if you actually mixed it in a pot and then poured it into the airbrush. But, um, I tend to avoid doing that basically because I don't like chucking a load of plastic pots into the bin. There we go. So hopefully if you are a beginner and you're kind of wondering about these you know, these worn paint effects you see, the other thing you can do is um, go between the panel lines. So what you can do is, I can't show you on this because I, I need to do it. I'll, I'll show you when I do the next colour, but you can actually go between the panel lines and sort of leave a, a post-shaded look if you like. Um, and if you want to, you can sort of come along with your paint and kind of in between the panel lines just lay the paint down a bit heavier so you get that kind of pre-shaded look yeah you can see on here we can go between these panel lines and do the same in here it is clogging up still There you go. Blow that back just to dry it out. Put a bit more paint in there. And there we are. So we've got our kind of blotchy camouflage finish now, which is what we're looking for. What I'm looking for because I want to beat this to hell. So there we go. So that's the green done. Now we, we, we don't put this back in because I'm not sure what that air, 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 airbrush flow improver will do. So I'm just going to use my paint thing here and just blow it through. There we go, that's that cleaned out. Now, when it comes to the brown colour, I'm just going to get a drop of thinners in the airbrush. Okay, I'm going to blow it back like this. I'm going to get a cotton bud and just wipe around the inside just to remove any excess paint that's in there. And then blow it through and that will do me. Okay. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to put the thinners in first. So we'll go a couple of drops of thinners. In fact, no, we've got to do our, um, we've got to stop, haven't we, let that dry so we can put our sausages on. 
It's me rushing ahead. Okay, so moving swiftly on, this paint's had about an hour to dry now, so I think it should be dry enough. And what we're going to do with these white tack sausages, I'm using white tack, I've explained all this before, but just in case you haven't heard it, white tack doesn't have the oil in it that blue tack does. So when you use white tack, it basically doesn't leave oily marks on your model, but you shouldn't really be leaving it on there long enough to cause an issue anyway. So basically what we're going to do here is just mask off this area here where we've got that. That's not long enough, is it? Just need to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to make all the sausages about the same diameter so that we get a similar effect. You know, if I use this one next to that one, or on the other side, say one here, one here, you like obviously get a softer line with this one because it's bigger. So you need to make them all about the same size. So what I'm going to do here is come along and just mask, mask off an area and just have a sort of fairly scraggly line down to there like so okay in fact I'll just come off of there a little bit and then what we will get from that is a a soft line I'm just pushing it down with my fingers now just to get it all about the same height and you want to make sure there's no one um, wrinkles or anything in it like if you did it um, like here where they got that wrinkle in it there you would end up with that line you don't really want that you want it to be a smooth even transition so there we go so that's that in there so I've got my airbrush here still just blow it out okay drop of thinners just a couple of drops of thinners one two there we go and then this is 34079 the darker green So that's 34159 I got there, that was close. 34079, the darker green. And we're just gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That should do us. That should be more than enough. And then just a drop of that stuff. I'm not sure that it really does much, but give that a mix. Check our flow. And then we can always hold on the tab if you can. And then what we can do is just come in and paint our camouflage and make sure we stay this side of the blue tack. So once again I'm doing this irregular pattern. That we get the irregular shape. What we can do here is concentrate about the middle of the panel lines. And there we go, so there's our darker green there. And just quickly go around the edge of the blue tack just to make sure. And then we can take the blue tack away. And we will see we've got a nice soft line. Now you can see here we've got a bit of a darkness on the edge. So what I can do here is come along with the airbrush. Get in nice and close. Get in nice and close and just get a bit more green in that area. And the other thing I could do. Is get my blue tack or my white tack should I say and reapply it I have it a little bit further over sorry you can't see because my arms in the way just going to reapply the blue tack here a little bit further over just like so like that okay and then airbrush in that area check our flow There we go, we've got our camouflaged area there now. You can see it's all blotchy and it's not all even and just, you know, straight sort of colours. It's all like held back. So I've got plenty of paint left in there. I've got nothing else here that needs to be that green colour. So 
basically what I could do is go and get one of the wings and do some painting on the wings but I can't be bothered so I'll just blow that out just like so and then um, drop a thinners notice I'm not using anything else other than Vallejo products because I don't want to start getting issues blow that back let it clean around the lens and everything get a cotton bud just wipe out the color cup and that's all I'm doing between colors is just blow it through and that's plenty good enough right so we've got our um this is the FS34201 is it yes this is the hemp tan green um so just check the flow we've got a couple of drops of thinners a couple of drops of the uh, retarder in there so once again just going to get the paint down on here and so remember this paint has got amazing coverage Again, go for this blotchy finish. Just build it up slowly, don't try and do it all in one. There's another way you can do things, you can go along the panel lines like that, filling in between the panel lines, and then dust over and you get that sort of pre-shaded look the same as if you go over the panel lines with your black first check the flow just gonna go around there again make sure I'm nice and tight in on my uh, make sure I'm nice and tight in on the um, the sausage roll There we go. Okay, we'll just leave that, see how that dries. So it looks as it starts to dry. And we'll do the same here. Check the flow. It, it is still clogging, even though I've got that flow improver. I think it's probably improved things, but it's still not as good as using um, lacquer paints. But it doesn't come with all the health hazards. Go. Just do the same here. So they've got a very very blotchy finish there so if you really wanted to do something really bad and worn out as I say you could 
go to town with this effect. If you notice, I'm always staying square as well. Stay square to the leading edge, square to the trailing edge, and square to the white tack so that we don't get the. Uh... So you don't get a variation in the actual edge. You want a nice. You just want one edge rather than a shadow. I'll lightly blow over this now just to try and even it out a bit. See, I'm hardly putting any paint on at all. It's practically drying as it hits the model. And that's the kind of thing you want. You don't want to be flooding it on. Revisit this one. happy with that we've got that blotchy look that I'm after there we go so don't empty the airbrush pull your white tack off just check all is good okay and you can see here we've got a bit of a black shading shadow area there so we're gonna do that again We've also got it here as well. This is where I haven't put the, the white tack over far enough. So basically what we'll do is just come along, reapply the white tack a little bit further back, just a, just a couple of millimetres, and that will give us, we'll get rid of that black shadow between the uh, camouflage colours. So we just to show you how easy this is, just come along with the airbrush, put in there again. Just get the colour in there, get rid of the black. Pull your white tack off. There we go. Okay, so now we've got rid of that. So we've got that, you see now we've got that lovely blotchy ward effect on the paint. It's more artistic license than reality. <clears throat> and then this one here, we're gonna redo all the way around because we have got that black shadow. As I say, you could avoid this if you just painted the whole thing green, but then you wouldn't get the black blotchy effect. What you could do is start with the darkest colour first and work back. <clears throat> this is always a problem if you've done pre-shading with camouflage, is getting the you end up where the camouflage demarcation is, you cover your pre-shading better. So you, you end up not seeing the effect. So just gonna do that there. And then check the flow. in there just put a shadow over that black literally just just a dust coat it's hardly anything going on there at all and there we go now you can see what I've done here 
I've actually put the, the white tack down with the painted side down and the wet paint has stuck to the old paint. If I come along with the white tack I should be able to remove that. like so. No, it's dried. Too slow. So I have to go over the green again. That's that's not an issue. And there we go. So that's we're happy with that now. I'm just gonna have to go over that green again. So I'm gonna blow the airbrush out. In fact what I'll do is I'll put some more of this colour in here just to Take some of that blotchiness away. There we go. I'll blow that through. And then I'm going to put drop of thinners in there. Blow that back. Clean end of a cotton bud in there. Wipe it round. Now, if you choose not to put cotton buds in your airbrush, that's fine. Um, you can get bits of fluff sticking out of them and stuff, so it's sometimes good not to uh, do that. So I'm going to put a drop of thinners in there, just one drip. And then I want the first colour, which was 34159. Just one two drops of that blow that back that should be a nice thin mix now and then what I could do is come in here and nice and steady just come in and colour in that Colour in that black area there. I must say this paint is not in the slightest bit forgiving when you're trying to do stuff like this. It's good for just you know spraying something, but for doing this fine work, it's hopeless. I'm just going to come away and shade away. Try that out. Let's try and get away that get away from that definite line. There you go guys, that is our camouflage work done on those two. So we could let that dry and unmask them. Now normally if it was gloss paints and stuff, I would suggest removing the masking straight away. But if it's um, flat paints, you could leave it, it doesn't matter because the gloss kind of forms a skin which will peel away if the masking tape dry. Whereas the matte is almost like a kind of powder, if you like, and it doesn't peel away. Dry that off. Just get some more colour in there. I think I'll do a little bit more around here as well. 
the issue is once you've had a bit of time with the airbrush you can, you can play with things like this but I would suggest not doing this with Viejo paints because it's not user friendly at all. One minute it's flooding out and the next minute there's nothing coming through at all. So there we go. I'm happy with that. So um, nice blotchy, dirty, worn look. Which is exactly what we're after. Now we can see here we've got some variation in colour. I'm not worried about that. That'll disappear when I weather it with oils and stuff, which I will be showing you. So I'm going to blow the airbrush through, I give the airbrush a proper clean and then I'll come back. Okay, so we've got our paint drying now and um, basically we're going to start looking at removing the masking, which I know that everybody likes to see. Now to do this, you're better off starting off with a knife, a, a very sharp point of a knife, and just try and get under the masking tape and just pick it up like so, just a tiny little bit and then come in with a little fine pair of tweezers and just gently peel the masking off like so. And then again with the knife underneath, you're not trying to scratch the model up because you, you don't want to be pushing it into the model and scratching the paint, just like so. And then once again underneath, just like that. And if you go back to my last video, part 24, I think this is part 25. If you go back to my last video, part 24, go away tape, um, you will see on there the way I did the masking and pushed it down and then painted the red first before we put any black on. So if anything bled underneath the masking tape, then basically what bled under the masking tape would be red, so you wouldn't see it. This one's going to prove to be difficult. And there we go. And now you can see we've got a very sharp, very nice, clean, black, red demarcation with no, no creep under the tape, no nothing. So that's what it does. So basically I painted it red, gave it a clear coat, let it dry, put the tape on, painted it red again, couple of wet coats, let it you know wet so if it's going to soak in it will soak in and then you can put your black over the top. The reason this bit here is left clear is because we're going to put the serial numbers in there if you remember. So that's that one. So I'm pleased when that's come out you can see I've also done some weathering on it and given it some some effects, some shadowing. Remember the camera accentuates everything so what you're seeing is is much more exaggerated than reality and then on here I'm just going to come under and pick up that corner come in with the tweezers and then pick up the tape and luckily this is pulling up the previous piece so if it keeps doing that that's going to make life very easy If you remember on there, we cut the masking tape out in part 24 and then we put some um, Viejo mask on there. If you are new to this and you're not up with your masking and everything, go and have a look at part 24, it's all on there. So basically you can see on there again, we've got a nice clean line. And because I gloss coated it, the tape sealed well. We haven't stuck the tape down on matte paint. So there you go. So there's our nice walkway line there all nice and sharp now this can't all go right so let's see if something's bound to have gone wrong somewhere nothing ever goes perfectly right nothing ever goes right for me get under that corner there This is the piece that's got the liquid mask on it. If 
remember this was Izu tape I used, available from Premium Hobbies. Really good stuff. Just gently pick at that and get it off. And we'll come with a knife under here. And in there, and there we go. There's the walkway on the other one. Now I can see that I've, I, what I did, I didn't actually uh, mask off that vortex generator on purpose because I, I knew I wouldn't be able to. So I've left it like that. So you can see now, when you look at these close up, put them two together, you can see we've got. That lovely effect once that's given a coat of um, varnish it will blend into one so now you can see we've got lovely clear marks and it's much easier and more effective and cleaner to do it that way than to do it with decals believe me so um there we go so i'm going to give those a gloss coat now right so i'm going to give these a gloss coat now aqua gloss um i think this stuff is absolutely amazing you don't stir it you don't mix it you don't do anything with it you just pour it in the airbrush and spray it I've got the airbrush at about 20 psi, I'm just going to check my flow, lovely flow there. Now we're not after any glossy finishes or anything, all I want to do here is just seal it in. So basically we know that Viejo paint doesn't stick particularly well, so what I'm going to do is just give it a coat of this just to seal the paint in, just to make it a bit more hard wearing so it doesn't scratch off too easily. Okay, just blow the dust off the fin. Same on the fin here. And we will probably come in with a heavier application when we know where the deck was going. So blow it off first and then just... This will also help to take away any edge where the masking tape has gone. Now we're not really too worried about that on this model because we've got raised panel lines where the edge of the masking tape is. So you're not particularly going to, you're not going to get rid of any lines anyway, but sometimes it's good to just very lightly rub, rub over the edge of the masking or where the masking was um, with some very, very fine paper just to take off the edge and then give it a clear coat and it makes it all look like one then. So um, I basically want to get inside these fins now, so we'll just go. As I say, we're not after a great finish, I just want to get something on there just to kind of seal it in so it doesn't all get scratched and rubbed off easily. Okay, now you could with this, even you could leave it like this because in reality when it was new it was glossy anyway. I'm just doing this because it's going to get a matte coat anyway. I'm just doing this as I say, just to... There we go, we've run out now. Just to help seal it in. That's the only reason. And there we are, after a little while, that's all sort of dried off now. And um, you can see it's got like a, a bit of a sheen to it, but it's not a full gloss coat. And what this will do, we'll, we'll give it a very gentle rub down. We'll, we'll put a heavy coat of gloss in this area so we know the decal's going to go down nice. Same here. Um, and then basically we can do all that when we do the whole decaling job. In fact, I may just put those decals on, we'll see. Um, and then we've got these here, which are all now all blended in, as you can see. So you haven't got that sharp sort of glossiness of the line and compared to the matte of the paint, a bit of glossy underneath. It's just, as I say, it's just sealing it in. It's making it a bit tougher. There we are. So that's those done. You can see there. You can see around here, taking your time, getting that mask in right, it just pays its dividends. And it's that kind of thing that just makes the model look so, so very, very clean, very, very clean and sharp. All right, if you want to see what it looks like on the aircraft, we'll have a look. So we can grab the fuselage here and we can shove that in there. Careful not to damage the paint. So you can see now on there how it's going to look. And we've got the other side here. That one's going to go above that one. Just like 
just like so. So you can see we've got, we've now got something that's starting to look like a proper B52. Okay then guys, now I don't know how long this video has been, I don't think it's been very long at all, but just so I can get something out there for you, I'm going to call it a day for this one. Um, I think in the next one we're going to be looking at actually fitting wings and stuff. So um, we've also got some work to do still on this um, on this canopy area here. I haven't done anything with that, I've let the missus servicer go off. So we'll be doing some sanding on there as well. But um, I will see you all very, very soon for part 26. As I say, I'm sorry I've been such a while doing this and I've been away, I've been making resin parts and done a bit of work on the Titanic. If you're interested, this is the um, the photo etch set from um, Scale the Titanic. These are the photo etch side walls. So I've put on the doubler plates on this one now. And uh, yeah, so I've done a video on that. If you haven't seen that, go take a look. It's quite interesting, probably, if you're into photo etch. And, um, and also I've been doing some work on the VC10, which is a video I'm doing for my Patreon, PayPal subscribers only. So um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Sorry it's been a bit quick, but um, I know that really for beginners, all the building stuff is great. But when it comes to the, the painting and the masking and all the different techniques and everything, I know that you guys get a lot more value from that. And I know that I'm going to get a lot more comments on this than I would on any sort of doing seams or filling or anything because it's um it's something that you know you you really do see the fruits of your labor at the end of the day so and all this gets just gets covered up with paint so we'll be doing all this masking as well on here with all the walkways on the top of the fuselage and these windows up over the uh up over the uh, cockpit here so watch this space and i'll see you all soon guys for part 26 thanks for watching happy modeling and bye for now